or terrestrial, obviously, that's the dichotomy. That While we... many still remain unconvinced that the STS-48 footage captured intelligently controlled spacecraft in mid-flight, it was the catalyst that would persuade both UFO researchers and amateur astronomers alike to pay much closer attention to space shuttle missions in the future. And, as you will learn later, what showed up on the STS-48 footage would prove to have a profound effect on this individual, one that would eventually lead him to an extraordinary discovery. During 1996, there were two notable events. In August of that year, NASA announced that it had unearthed fossilized evidence contained in a Martian meteorite and discovered 12 years earlier in the frozen wastes of Antarctica, which would appear to suggest that life, albeit billions of years old, once existed on the Red Planet. The declaration, which has yet to be embraced by the scientific community at large, created headlines around the world, and more or less ensured that NASA would have no difficulty in raising the necessary funds to embark on an ambitious, unmanned series of mission probes to Mars in the future. Three months later, on the 1st of December 1996, Space Shuttle astronauts on board STS-80 filmed something remarkable. Scores of anomalous objects could be seen skirting Earth's upper atmosphere below, but then, from beneath a high bank of cloud, emerged a large sphere, almost plasma-like in appearance. And, as the sequence rolls, Note how the camera on board the space shuttle zooms in on a cluster of anomalous objects which appear to congregate on the Earth's horizon. Interestingly, during that same mission, astronauts would point their cameras towards Brazil, more specifically, Sao Paulo. Were they expecting something? Whatever suddenly streaked into view would appear to suggest they were. But what was it? A short time would pass before anomalous activity was filmed again, only this time in close proximity to the Mir space station. The STS-84 docking and undocking mission with Mir provided breathtaking images. It also provided further puzzles. Thanks to an amateur astronomer known as Willie, some of the footage transmitted by STS-84 was disseminated around the world. Hardly surprising, since it contains several remarkable scenes. Determining which one has most appeal, or greater mystery, is debatable. But why does this particular sphere suddenly come to a direct stop, hover momentarily, then move up and behind the Mir space station to emerge on the other side? And was this appearance of dozens of anomalous objects caused by the flushing of a toilet on board the space shuttle, or something else? Assuming then that this is mere space debris, would it not be considered dangerous to those on board both the space shuttle and Mir space station to answer that question would require detailed analysis of pristine STS-84 footage, but NASA refuses to release any of it, and the question is surely, why? Signals from space can and do take on many forms, and while some dishes scattered around the world listen for faint traces of extraterrestrial intelligence from afar, others are designed to receive signals transmitted from much closer to home. During the 1990s, Millions of miniature-sized dishes sprang up across Britain as satellite technology came of age. Both here and in countries abroad, many individuals chose to erect more powerful dishes to locate and access a wide variety of transmissions being back to Earth from scores of overhead satellites. In theory, the more powerful the receiver, the more choice it would offer. And, as we've already seen, some of those individuals chose to utilize their satellite dishes to monitor and record transmissions being down to Earth from the space shuttle. But what if one of those individuals had the means to utilize an even greater array of satellite receiving dishes to record and subsequently log every second of NASA transmissions from not one solitary space shuttle mission but from several covering a period of almost five years? What then? That incredible scenario first came to light late one evening in the summer of 1999 when Graham Birdsell, editor of UFO magazine in Britain, took a call on his mobile phone. The caller was Martin Stubbs, a cable TV station manager from Vancouver in Canada. For the next 45 minutes, Graham listened intently as Martin proceeded to recount an extraordinary story 
in which he claimed to have accessed NASA's downlink transmissions, originating from numerous space shuttle missions that stretched back over a period of several years. And, amidst all of this carefully logged footage, footage that amounted to over two and a half thousand hours, Martin further claimed to have stumbled across something equally extraordinary, palpable evidence for the reality of not one, but two extraterrestrial life forms. In order to fully verify these and other equally amazing claims, Russell Callahan was dispatched to Vancouver last August to meet up with Martin in person. This is, this is Joining him would be hard. Brian Borshoff, project me, director of the Phenomena hard, Exhibition, who flew in especially from Australia. And after spending an entire uh, week in the company the of Martin, I think you have engaged in for I the did. most part viewing countless moment, hours of NASA footage, flight, the staggering implications years, of what he'd uncovered if you're, if you're soon became apparent. To substantiate for although Martin had come across countless further examples of mysterious sphere-like activity, his trained eye as an experienced TV editor had picked out something else, something that he would find compelling, something that others would later find amazing. At the conclusion of their visit to Vancouver, a tri-party agreement was reached, one that would ensure worldwide public disclosure through methods and means that would soon become apparent in the weeks and months to follow. But why, on the strength of one phone call, did Russell Callahan and Brian Borshoff travel thousands of miles to touch base with Martin Stubbs in the first place? Call it intuition, call it good luck, call it what you will, but on hearing Martin relate his extraordinary story, he sent out a signal far more powerful than that generated by any satellite. And what better means to demonstrate the point than by having Martin recount that story in his own words? Hi, I'm Martin Stubbs and I'm uh, a resident of Bowen Island, Canada. Bowen Island is a small island of about 3,000 people just off the coast of British Columbia. The city we directly commute to on a little ferry, 20 minute ride, is the great city of Vancouver. And it's here that I was able to discover through NASA's own video downlinked from the shuttle, two types of phenomena that from my estimation should not be there. The first phenomena uh, is a spherical phenomena. It's the best I can do in terms of explaining it. And the second phenomena is a phenomena that is virtually invisible to the human eye, but when filmed with a CCD camera and the broke, you break the video into frames and there's 30 frames per second then you split the frames into fields because each frame contains two scan fields and it is in those fields we have discovered our second space phenomena uh, it's not a matter of finding something that is a reasonable doubt scenario it's 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 more about Let's just keep collecting, studying, and analyzing, and eventually the jigsaw puzzle will come together, and it's finally happened. I held a very privileged position in the city of Vancouver. I was in charge of, for the past 20 years actually, uh, community access cable stations. And those are public stations that uh, use volunteers, interns, make all their own programming and put it out on the cable system. Here in British Columbia and throughout the rest of Canada, we have 90% cable saturation. So it's the equivalent of having a uh, full channel. And in my office, I had um, old log tapes from logging the station available and they were supposed to be turned over after a few times, so I just piled them up and I had VCRs. I had the means. And I, I talked to our technical department and asked them if they could give me my own dish. Um, and they did. And I set my machines and went about my normal daily life of managing two of these facilities. And I just would go home at night after each shuttle's mission or each, each day of the shuttle mission 
and break the tape down. And 